Welcome. You are listening to The Elegy, episode number one. I'm Kira Garlic. I'm Lily Hartenstein. And I'm Desmond Camus. Here on campus, we discuss the community, acceptance, and what it's like to live now versus years before. Since 1994, October has been celebrating the progress of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer community throughout history. As we celebrate LGBT History Month this October, this is The Epitaph. Hey everybody, I'm Kira Garlic, and here I'm today with Anna. She's the president of GSA. Anna, what can you tell us about your opinion on how LGBTQ and the community has gotten better at Homestead throughout the years? Hi, thank you. Um, I think that it's definitely um, improved since the like many previous years. Um, right now, we have a lot of programs at the school that we do, um, raising money for AIDS healthcare and research. And overall, there's been um, a big improvement in like reducing the use of slurs around the school and the students and in general like more acceptance and also I feel that teachers are more aware and um, helpful in general for students but there's always improvements that we could make. All right thank you so much. I'm Kira Garlic and today I'm here with Mr. Ratty. Hi. And nice to meet you. How you been doing? I'm well. How are you doing? Good. What do you think about the weather so far? It's blustery. I love it. <laughs> it's been real crazy. I put on my blankets and my old man sweaters. Okay. <laughs> so, as you know, October is LGBT History Month, mm -hmm. and in honor of that, we decided we would love to talk about our favorite moments from history. Cool. Do you have any favorites that you'd like to share? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I think about... Yeah, I, when I talk to my young friends, when I talk to kids in high school about, like, LGBT rights, it's really, really different because when I graduated high school, and I graduated in 2001, mm -hmm. so this millennium, thank you, um, <laughs> it, was, it was really different. I mean, it's not that it wasn't something that we talked about, but um, there totally wasn't as much visibility. Um, yeah. And I also grew up in a much more conservative environment. Oh. The Central Valley originally. Oh, okay. Oh, my God. Um, and so I didn't, I definitely wasn't taught anything in high school, like nothing. Um, and so when I got to college, and especially when I started taking, um, gender studies courses, which were required for my major, um, I was like, oh, there's, there's like a lot to talk about. Yeah. There's like a lot to learn. And so of course Stonewall is just, uh, crucial in, in when we, when we joined the conversation, I think, and... Um, Do you want to tell us a little bit about what Stonewall is? Yeah, sure. Stonewall was Stonewall is a bar in um, New York City, and um, in the... Uh, and it was... There wasn't a, such a thing as gay bars in, in the 60s. There were bars that gay people could go to. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't like there were, like, rainbow flags, like, flying outside or anything like that, and so... Um, gay folk, queer, queer people in, in, in general would go to these bars and it was like, it was like their, their space, it was their safe space. Um, homosexuality, uh, cross-dressing, transvesticism, everything like that was illegal in a number of states during that time. And, um... Police patrols would go around on morality raids. Morality make, raids. Interesting yeah. the way they phrase that. Oh, yeah, yeah. That I mean, is just, so weird. Just the way, um, I mean, think about the Crucible. I mean, with the Committee of Un-American Activities, right? Yeah. It was just, <laughs> just those phrases sound so antiquated to us. Yeah, that's not accepted in today's no, society. No, You can't say no. those kinds of things. Um, but they would go around to make sure that people were acting moral. You know, because it's one thing to be gay, it's another thing to act on being gay. Yeah. And there are still people that feel that way today. Uh, but anyway, so they would go around to these bars and they would do just random raids, quite frankly, of who was there, what they were doing, stuff oh like gosh, that. Oh my gosh, would they arrest people? Totally, arrest people. Um, sometimes there were beatings. Sometimes oh, get there, violent. Were, there was violence, yeah. 
and um, raids had happened at uh, Stonewall Inn a, a number of times before, but on this particular day, and I apologize, I don't know the date off the top of my head, um, they just said enough, and they fought back. And, That's amazing. And so a number of uh, patrons, um, very visibly um, um, trans women of color, and, mm-hmm. and this is really important to our history, were like, no, enough, and fought back. So and what kind of things did they do? Did they protest? Protest, and the fact that um, they just made a whole bunch of ruckus when they were arrested, and, I mean, this is the late 60s, so, of course, the um, civil rights movement is, is still underway. The black yeah. power movement is still underway. It's all still coming into light, And this yeah. is the very beginning of the women's empowerment, empowerment movement That's true. That well. started to really heat up in the ni- mm-hmm. early 1900s. And, um, and so the gay rights movement was just a part of that civil rights movement um, that, that really uh, came out um, then. Uh, gay pride parades happening for the first time. Um, straight allies voicing their alliedness for the first time. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, which is crucial to our rights because um, uh, we're roughly 10% of the population. So in order for any laws to be passed in our favor, we have to have the support Make an alliance, yeah. of, of our um Straight brothers and sisters. I mean, y'all were the ones that made us anyway. <laughs> um, and so Stonewall was just absolutely... It was. Um, it was really just fantastic. Huge, just huge. Yeah. Um, what else through history? Um, the AIDS epidemic oh, is yeah. a really important part of our history. Um, Harvey Milk is such an important part of our history. Harvey Milk, is that a person? Harvey Milk was the first openly gay... Um, um, county board member of San Francisco. San Francisco is both its own city and county, and so their um, county supervisors are mm, kind of like the city council to some degree. Um, and he was the and it was the, the first time that an openly gay person ran and was elected um, to to a major position of, of civic responsibility. Uh, that's great. Uh, a short yeah. time, amazing, amazing. A short time after he was elected, he and the then mayor Moscone um, were assassinated at City Hall. Oh wow, really? Yes. Oh my gosh! And there are people who saw this. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, Diane so Feinstein, tragic. who is one of our uh, senators now, she was present at, at this assassination. Wow, she must have a lot to say. About she does. She does. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, Harvey Milk, I mean, before, he was a very uh, uh, boisterous personality, very flamboyant and, and unapologetically um, so. Uh, I mean, he, he was so inspiring to so many people, and he said, and he, he, he knew what, what kind of risk he was under, and, and he said, uh, rather prophetically, if a bullet should enter my brain, may it shatter a thousand closet doors. Oh, which, my gosh. Which was the... the Permission for gay people to to come out, uh, which is such a that's a very bold statement. Bye, baby. I love you so much. Text me if you need anything. Okay, do your homework. Take notes. Love you. Bye. <laughs> bye. Um, and um, those words have been inspiration. Yeah, and definitely. Since then for all of us to to come out, and it's it's a it's a unique experience for all of us. It's yeah. different for every single yeah, one of is. us. Um, that's really interesting. And I would say the, the most um, significant moment in my little life was uh, June of 2015 when the Supreme Court granted uh, same-sex marriage rights to all 50 states. Yes, amen. Oh, my God. It was... Thank goodness. I, I remember waking up early. Uh, I was during the summer. I was teaching mm-hmm. summer school. And I knew that the results um, were going to come out 10 a.m. Eastern time, so 7 o'clock here. So I was I was... Up on Twitter at like six fifty five, just mm-hmm. like waiting, waiting, waiting. Yeah, waiting. just to see the results. Yeah, and and it came through, and it just it just every, everybody just instantly. Just the whole tears. world was just erupted in a whole bunch of love. It and was, uh, it was I remember amazing. driving to work, and I listened to Fernando and Greg in the morning, the uh, the gay morning <laughs> show, and they played um, 
same love by Malcolm Moore. And that I, is I'm, such a good song. Such an I love song, that but song. I was just, I was just heaving sobs all the way to to work because when I was your age, I never thought I was going to get married because I never thought yeah. I was going to be allowed to. And I, I hate to say that I accepted it. I was like, oh, this is. That's terrible this that this people had to think is, that way you know? a while ago. But it was just this really amazing um, recognition. And then when President Obama and Vice President Biden um, came out with their support of same-sex marriage, and it was just like, to have <laughs> my president say, yes, gay people should be able to... I'll, I'll, I'll just never, ever forget that as long as I live. Yeah, man. that's a really good story. Oh, I oh. love it. <laughs> oh, I'll never forget it. That's really good. So final thoughts. What about the Homestead community and their acceptance? Um, I found that um, Homestead is um, a very welcoming community. Um, I wish I could say that I've never gotten any negative comments oh, from no. students, parents, teachers um, about my um, choosing to be out to the homestead community, um, I've, I've learned how to deal with that. So it's never yeah. really been much of an issue. Very, very rarely um, has a student been removed from my class. I don't, my job is to teach, right? And, yeah. and I don't want to uh, interfere with somebody's learning. If they are so uncomfortable being in my class, well, then I want them removed so that they can learn. Yeah. I don't want them to not learn for and a that's year. That's what it's all about. That's my passion. But I find this to be a very, very accepting community. Um, the people that have the biggest problem with it are, are adults, quite frankly. <laughs> Parents. Um, yeah, people well, are still stuck in their old yeah, ways. Yeah, And we're a very multicultural school, and, and people come from different cultures. And, of course, different cultures treat um, uh, gay folk different ways. And so I do understand that. But, no, my students... Um, um, first of all, they either don't think about it, which I think is like just the greatest form yeah. of acceptance. They're just, like, oh, okay. <laughs> just acceptance and keep like, living life. Like they, they hate me because I just assigned a crucible essay. You know, like <laughs> that's it. Like that's the only matter. reason. Um, or, or they are excited to to be in my class. My openly gay students are really excited to be in my class. Yeah, that's amazing. You can have that sort of community uh, in the class. I can only imagine. And I'm stoked that. They feel open to talk about their experiences um, as well, and that's that's most of the reason I choose to um, be out. That and laziness, like, I, like I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not going to change the pronouns of, of, of who I hang out with. I'm Lily Hartenstein, and right now I'm interviewing Sawyer Smith. How do you identify? I identify as non-binary, and in that realm, I identify as gender fluid. So what pronouns should we use for the podcast I'm referring to? They, them, please. Awesome. Um, when did you come out? Um, coming out's really just a process, so I'm still coming out to people nowadays and just more and more people, but I think I first started coming out to people about a year and a half ago. And how do people typically react? They're honestly generally pretty accepting. Maybe they aren't so educated or don't really know about non-binary genders and such, but they all are really willing to learn about me and use the right pronouns, so that's great. So how do you feel about your place in the LGBT community? I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of gatekeeping going on, and a lot of people, even within that community, will tell me, like, I'm not real, or, like, you're just straight pretending to be gay, but I'm really not. Um, so what is your opinion on the culture of acceptance here at Homestead and in the general area? Where we live, it's a really great place to live. I think if I lived in other places, maybe I wouldn't be quite as accepted. But definitely living here, I've been accepted for who I am for the most part. And it's really great living here. And how do you think like the school community is? I think the school community is pretty good about it. There might be some people who, like I said, aren't quite as educated about it. But for the most part, I think maybe some ignorance does come from a place of love. They just don't really know how to accept things. So why do you think that LGBT history is a month is important? I think it's important to know that like there's been like this big like, like let me give me a second. Can you pause it? Yeah. <laughs> why do you think that LGBT history month is important? I think it's important because there has been a big explosion within the past few years of LGBT rights and so on, but people need to realize that like gay people just didn't 
exist as of now. Like they, we've been around and LGBT members have been around for a really long time. And I think it's important for people to know where we came from so we can move forward. Awesome, that's such a good answer. And then like, you know, there are people saying it's a trend. It's like not a trend. It's not. They've and been here. Do you think LGBT mom- history month is important for everyone, not just those LGBT community? I think it is because some people may think they're straight or may have a family member who is LGBT and I think it's important for people to learn about things so they can be more accepting because I found the people who are more educated tend to be more accepting than people oh. wait I got messed up it's okay, it's okay. Wait. keep going wait, 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 wait I forgot what I was gonna say what was the question again um do you think LGBT history month is important for everybody not oh just- yeah I think it's important for everyone because some people may be questioning or they may have a family member who's LGBT and the more educated they are about it the more easily I think it is to accept something like that because if you don't know much about something maybe people tend to fear it or push it away and separate themselves from it so I think the more education we have the better. Yes, thank you. I love your answers. There were some total yas moments. Um, finally, any comments or like personal anecdotes you want to share or anything? Honestly, just go out there and learn about things. I mean, there's no such thing as having too much info. Student-run podcast. The opinions are solely of the speakers and may not reflect the opinions of the Epitaph or Homestead High School. You should listen to it if it's, like, loud in the...